Morgan and Marduk here. You are watching Agoraphobic News. Hey, hey, Milos here, Agoraphobic News, this time with Mr. Morgan of Marduk. Hello, sir. How are you? I'm fine. Just good. So it's been a while since your last time in Serbia. What what is like the the thing that you like the most about this country? It's hard to say what you like about specific countries. I mean, I'm, I'm a great fan of the whole of Europe, but for me, every country is a great experience, and, and they're all different in their own way, and they all have the greatness and their not so much greatness. But I mean, overall, I mean, whole of Europe and more or less all of the world. I mean, for us, it's just a great pleasure to march across every territory. And. Uh, did you see the Kalamegdan Fortress and the War Museum? Yeah, I seen it. So you, you saw this NATO plane? Yeah, 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 I saw it and I saw the old tanks and things like that. I always try to see those things when I travel around a bit. And do you get, did you get some inspiration from <sighs> Not really inspiration, but I mean, <laughs> I'm inspired about so many things, but I try to see all the museums that I can when I'm on tour to see things that interest me. So, of course, that's one of the things that I like to see. Yeah, and uh, like uh, a lot of Marduk's lyrics are, are related to Romania, to, like Tsepes, uh, uh, you know, and uh, Countess Battery, Hungary. Is there something that... I don't think we had any songs about Countess Battery, but we did uh, a few songs about Vlad back in the day. Yes, we did. So I wouldn't say very much about Romanian history, but it's about him specific. But that's like uh, uh, 21 years ago or something, so yeah. some bridge under the water. And uh, can you tell me what is like the symbolism behind the uh, Dark Endless album cover? Well, it's, uh, I found it because at that time a lot of people were doing different album covers. We wanted something a bit more surrealistic to describe the theme of the album and for us it was a great thing because the album is painted by Danny Valla from the old Swedish band Obscurity and we specifically wanted to have a picture done by him, a painting, mm -hmm. and we chose that one because in its own surrealistic way it reflects the spirit of the album. So it has nothing to do with residents? No. <laughs> I know what you mean with the eye, but no. Yeah, okay. And, uh, you know, on that album there is a song called Still Fucking Dead. Is that about the making, making frontman or not? About who? Uh, dead. No, it's not. It's not? No. And uh, what is like the... F can you recall your first time when you heard Mayhem? Uh, I remember I heard Death Crush, but uh, I wasn't the biggest fan of that. But I mean, for me, Mayhem became, became the band they are when, when Dead joined them. I think that became uh, the Mayhem that I appreciate mostly if I should say so that period they had with him of vocals is for me the ultimate soundtrack to, to Mayhem. Yeah. And uh, you interviewed the guy back in 1989 I think in Slayer magazine. Yeah and I did it for some other ma magazines as well. Awesome. And, yeah. uh, what was your, like your impression of him? It's a few years ago now as you see but I mean it's hard to describe because so much has been written about him, but I think if, overall my impression that I remember is uh, a guy very serious with the things he was dealing with, but still a very humoristic and fascinating personality. And what about Euronymous? Yeah, same thing. I mean, it was also very serious and I appreciated working with him in the old ways we worked together during those years. And uh, one of the pillars of this musical scene who founded so many things like the record label and his mail order and his impact on this musical history, you know. Is it true that you have like the uh, the brains and uh, pieces of brain and skull of uh, that? That's old news. And it's been written, been too much written about it. It's become like a soap opera. So like people should leave it be. Whatever people want to call it, I just find it becoming really ridiculous. Everything around it, but yeah. And uh, can you explain this uh, blood, war, and death concept? Well, it's the blood, fire, death concept. It's a theme that we very close to to this music and to our spirit, and we decided to do loosely based three albums themed on it. Blood, Fight, Death, of course, as a an, an, uh, tribute thing to Bathory, of course, and we did Blood, which was Nightwing, we did Panzer, which was Fire, and we did the La Grande album, which was Death. It's a very foundation that's still very much the essence of this band and our lives, so it's, it's still very active, if I should say so. Yeah, but it's really sad to know that a lot of these uh, black metal le legends are not anymore with us. Yeah, but... Like, yeah, but people die, that's life, you know. Yeah. Nobody will escape that, so... And uh, you did a cover of uh, Destruction's Total Disaster. 
So how important was like this uh, German thrash metals? Yeah, I mean, they had a lot of good bands in the 80s, but I don't think they really had a lot of good bands after that. But I mean, of course, I mean, the destruction creator, the bands that had a huge impact on us when we were younger, I mean, that's the way it was. Yes. That's what you had. <laughs> Basically, thrash died in the 90s with Clash of the Titan Store. Maybe. I mean, there's still thrash bands that have been around since that time, and it's coming a, a retro wave of that as well, which I don't really find as good as the originals, but things goes in circles. And uh, a lot of your uh, music is like, uh, has this Eastern uh, vibe, Eastern scales. So can you tell me more about it? I don't know what to tell about it. For me, music has always been about creating music and lyrics that reflect each other, you know, and to get a certain atmosphere and spirit, you work on, on music and lyrics and making them becoming a hard-hitting force. And I guess it takes its musical shapes as it does. Yeah. And uh, are you a fan of uh, Ved Buens and... Uh, I don't... not really. Really? I don't remember, I, I haven't heard them since the 90s, so I don't really know, I don't remember. And uh, what are like the driving force in black metal, in your own opinion? What did you say? The driving force of black metal. Today. I would say for for myself, it's the energy that comes from within. And uh, can, are you a Satanist? Yes, I am. I will always be. And can you explain what is Satanism to ordinary? I, I think people? we have explained everything we have done so much over the years, so people would know it or they will have to make up their own mind about it because I'm not really speaking about my own thoughts because people can't take it, so... Yeah, back in the day you released the album uh, Frontschwein yeah. and uh, what, what is, in your opinion, the worst time in history to be a Frontschwein? Frontschwein. I mean, it's impossible to say because every time period has its own aspects <laughs> of it, so I mean, yeah. it's constant and has always been constant. There will always be Frontschweins in their own way, that doing the dirty job, if I should say so, or and being so, nothing changes in history, it only repeats itself from time to time. Uh, your latest album is called uh, Victoria, so what is like the concept behind it? Well, it's very easy for people to find out if they just listen to it and read the lyrics, I think they can make up their mind about it, so it shouldn't be that big problem. And Every, the, everything shouldn't be explained, you know, it, it's like paintings from the past, you shouldn't yeah. explain them, people should make up their own mind about it. I really think that that's the way you should uh, portray the art, that Absolutely. it's all in the eye of the beholder, yes. basically. And uh, do you have any last words for... Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Can't think of anything. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Hey people, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Agoraphobic News. Please like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel to help us grow. You can also support us on Patreon by becoming one of our patrons. And big shout out to our patron Season of Mist for supporting our work. So stay tuned for another interview and keep it metal.